Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Tennis Manager 2021 playthrough as the Old School Sports Tennis Academy. We are midway through the 2023 season. Uh, Maxime Cressy is ranked 45th in the world. Our goal is to get him into the top 35 before the end of the season, so we've got some work to do there. Uh, the other player at our academy is Stefan Kozlov. He's currently ranked 65th in the world. His goal this season was just to get into the top 100. So uh, doing very well in terms of uh, Stefan moving up the rankings, but got some work to do with Maxime. You can see that Maxime is in the Hall of Fame open on uh, the grass courts to uh, start out this summer hard court season with one final, uh, one final tournament on the grass. And Stefan Kozlov is going to be in the Getno Open in uh, Canada. Well, we're three weeks into the uh, summer hardcourt season, and our results have uh, absolutely been mixed. Uh, Maxime Cressy has played in uh, three 250 level events. You can see he got bounced in the round of 32 at both the Hall of Fame Open and the Atlanta Open. But he did just make it to the quarterfinals at the Los, Caba Los Cabos Mexicano Open. Um, you know, those 250 events, uh, quarterfinal appearance is, is what he needs points-wise to, uh, to really generate anything. Um, it's getting questionable whether we're going to be able to get into the top 35 in the world with him by the end of the year. He's going to need a real good performance uh, coming up at the U.S. Open or in some of the Masters events that he's going to be playing in shortly. Uh, positively, um, you know, Maxime does have his first, uh, the first of several between now and the end of the season Masters level events this week at the Rogers Cup. So hopefully he can uh, do some damage there. Stefan Kozlov, um, been mixed also, um, round of 16 at the Gatineau Open. Then he had a real good run at the 250 level uh, BB&T Atlanta Open, making it to the quarterfinals, which for a player of his ranking, still roughly uh, 15 to 20 spots behind Maxime, who uh, was 300-something in the world just a year and a half ago, is a pretty good performance. Um, he tried qualifying for the Rogers Cup uh, Masters 1000 uh, level event earlier this week, and unfortunately he lost in the first round uh, so he is going to be back at the academy training this week in preparation for the uh, vancouver open a 100 level event next week you can see he's never won at the 100 level so uh, the vancouver open could be a good opportunity for uh, stefan kozlov to uh, per potentially add a uh, another rung on to the uh, level of of tournament that he's he's won at Well, as you know, Maxime is at the Rogers Cup this week. Uh, one of his goals this season is to get to the round of 16 in a Masters 1000 level event. Uh, the good news is that he won his first match, so he's in the round of 32. He is just uh, one win away from getting to that round of 16 goal. Um, the bad news is that uh, he has to face the uh, number one seed in the entire tournament, Tsitsipas, in the... Uh, round of 32 to get to that round of uh, 16 match so uh definitely going to be a challenge for maxime against not just the number one seed but the number one player in the entire world uh we'll check out and see how maxime cressy can do against stefano Tsitsipas here at the rogers cup in montreal be a huge upset for Maxime to defeat the number one player in the world but uh it's the type of win that he's going to have to start uh, having at some point if he's going to get into the top 35 before the end of the season and you can see we're down two breaks early Tsitsipas is just overwhelming us took that first set 6-0 so uh not a good start And we're down an early break, down a second break. The only question is whether we can avoid getting completely skunked, and we couldn't. So Maxime Cressy up against the number one player in the world, a 0-0 o o loser. Just a uh, very difficult match, but uh, 
probably to be expected when uh, you're facing uh, the top player in the world. Well, Maxime is starting out this week at another Masters 1000 level event. Uh, you can see that Stefan Kozlov is going to be at the Vancouver Open. Uh, Maxime with a uh, Tsitsipas uh, last last match was a uh, tough challenge. Doesn't get much easier now. Uh, Maxime Cressy against one of the all-time greats, Novak Djokovic. Uh, we'll see how Maxime can do against uh, Novak, but uh, going to be a very challenging match for him, to say the least. Never have played him. Uh, Djokovic, 36-year-old. Uh, uh, you can tell that Maxime has moved up to a uh, different level of player uh, when he's facing Tsitsipas and Djokovic in back-to-back -back matches, but... Uh, Going to have to start uh, finding the ability to beat these incredible players to uh, continue moving up in the rankings. And we're already down an early break, down two early breaks. We did, uh, we did win a game, so that is better than what we did against Tsitsipas last time out. But uh, got a lot of work to do to compete with uh, this level of player. Still on serve here midway through, but we were just broke, and it's over. So Djokovic beat us 6-1, uh, 6-3. A first-round loss at the Cincinnati Masters for Maxime. Um, getting increasingly pessimistic that we're going to be able to get him into the top 35 in the world, which likely means that uh, Maxime will be leaving the academy at the end of this season, which is disappointing. Uh, we have taken him from around 160th when we first started playing this game to in the top 50 in the world, but uh, he has great ambitions, and uh, so far the collaboration this year hasn't uh, hasn't really moved us any closer to those ambitions, but we still have uh, you know, about three months left of tennis to play, so there's still a chance. We are nearing the end of the summer hardcourt season, and we are in New York at the U.S. Open, where both Maxime Cressy and Stefan Kozlov are part of the main draw. You can see Maxime is going to be starting off against J.J. Wolf, so a difficult match for him to uh, kick off the tournament. And uh, Stefan Kozlov has already lost in the first round, so uh, no need looking to... Uh, see where we, he is in the draw as uh, he is already out so uh difficult start for uh, both of our player well a difficult start for stefan and a uh, difficult matchup for um maxine coming up against jj wolf looking at the draw for both of our players I uh, can see that Stefan Kozlov lost to the number eight seed in the first round, so a real tough matchup for him. He lost two, four, and one straight sets. And as I mentioned, uh, Maxime is going to uh, be going against J.J. Wolf. Uh, you can see Maxime is the 49th ranked player in the world. Wolf is 35th. And a couple of prominent players uh, will be playing in the other match on this side of the bracket with Marion Chilik. And uh, one of the all-time greats, Roger Federer. So uh, could be an interesting match for whichever American wins if they get to face the uh, all-time great in Federer in the second round. But before that happens, uh, we're going to have Maxime Cressy against J.J. Wolf. You can see we are 0-2 lifetime against the 24-year-old American. Uh, Maxime is in a position where he's got to start scoring some points and picking up some points in these big tournaments. So... Uh, Hopefully this is an opportunity for him to uh, get his first match against his uh, fellow countrymen here at the U.S. Open. On serve here in the early stages of the first set, but we got broke early, or not early, but in the middle of the set, and uh, already down one set to uh, J.J. Wolf.
Maxime off to a great start in the second set, though. A couple of early breaks. And he takes it 6-1. Great bounce back for Maxime Cressy. Hopefully he can keep that momentum going here in the third set. We're on serve. Ooh, but Maxime just got broke. So, uh, have to come back. Got to win two straight sets now to take this match away from J.J. Wolf and uh, finally get to defeat the countryman here. Let's see if Maxime can do better here in the fourth set. On serve in the early stages, Maxime just got a couple of breaks, though, and he overwhelms him. Interesting. 3-6, 6-1, 3-6, 6-1, the first two sets. So, uh... Maxime has won more games than Wolf, but uh, we are tied at 2-2 two two heading to the fourth set, or heading to the fifth set. Maxime is pumped. You're there. You're going to make the difference in the end. On serve early here in the third set. Maxime just got a break. Oh, but... He let Wolf break back, but then Maxime got another break. So Maxime Cressy with a big victory at the U.S. Open. A 3-6, 6-1, 3-6, 7-5 triumph over J.J. Wolf to move into the second round. Well done, Maxime. And we are, not surprisingly, going to be facing Roger Federer in the round of 64. So uh, does not get any easier for Maxime. Uh, in this hardcourt season, he's already faced Tsitsipas and Djokovic. And now he is going to be facing Federer. So uh, tough schedule for Maxime. So getting ready to face Federer, you can see he's 16th in the world. Maxime Cressy is 49th. Uh, big, big tournament here. And 0-1 in his career against Federer, at least since this game started. They may have uh, faced each other previously in the past. You're not going to let him beat you again, Maxime. Although I'm not going to lie. I don't know if I believe that myself as your coach, but I'm not going to say that to you. Maxime is up an early break on Federer. But when you're playing someone as dangerous as him, you always got to worry about them breaking back. Didn't happen, though. A 6-3 win in the first set for Maxime, and Maxime's going to be serving to start the second set. Could we have a huge upset here? Don't enable him to get his head above water, Maxime. And we're down an early break in the second set, so uh, Federer is coming back. It's certainly not going to be easy. The match is going to depend on a few key points, Maxime. Make sure that you win those. On serve here midway through the third set. Look, we are in a high. We are in a tiebreaker, and Maxime has won the tiebreaker. So he is just one set away from upsetting one of the all-time greats. He has not said his last word, Maxime. No doubt about it. This ain't gonna be easy. On serve here, midway through the third set now. And we are in another tiebreaker. And Maxime Cressy has defeated one of the all-time greats in the round of 64 at the U.S. Open. A 6-3, 3-6, 7-6, 7-6 win for Maxime over Roger Federer. The biggest win of Maxime's career. Uh, he still has a ways to go to achieve his goals for this season. One of them was to get into the round of 16 at a Grand Slam, so he is still one win away from that. We will see how this goes. And Casper uh, Ruud is going to be his next matchup. I hear my 
computer making weird name weird sounds and uh as you know if you uh have uh watched this series before that sometimes uh when my computer starts making weird sounds this program freezes up on me so uh i definitely don't want to lose this uh episode especially after the big win over roger federer so just uh save things we are going to continue on to see if uh, we can get the win over Casper in the round of 32, which would be absolutely massive, uh, pushing us into the round of 16, which was one of Maxime's big goals for the season. And uh, wow. And he is the 29th seed in the world, uh, ranked 31st in the world, 29th seed in the tournament, ranked 31st in the world. So uh, once again, Maxime will be the underdog, but he's beaten the 35th ranked player in the world and the 16th ranked player in the world so far. He's uh, having a great tournament. There's no reason that he can't beat the uh, young Norwegian here. So we are headed to a huge match for Maxime's career and, quite honestly, his future with the Old School Sports Tennis Academy. If uh, he's able to get to the round of 16 in a Grand Slam, that would be uh, huge for not only his rankings, but also uh, his ability to meet his goals that he sent out for the season and potentially stick with us. But you can see he got blown out 6-2 in that first set, going to uh, need to uh, do better here in the second set. Oh, we just got broke here early in the second set, so uh, things are not going well. We've lost the first two sets, 6-2, uh, 6-3, six, six, so going to need a uh, historic comeback from Maxime. He's still pumped. You've got everything in your hands to bounce back, Maxime. Let's see what you can do. And we're already down a break here in the third set. Time to break back, Maxime, or it's all over, and it is all over. So a loss to Casper Rude, 6-2, 6-3, Maxime's U.S. Open is over in the round of 32. Uh, best performance he's ever had in a Grand Slam, but uh, we are going to fail in our goal for this season of getting to the uh, round of 16 in a Grand Slam tournament, which is unfortunate. We are at the end of the hard court season, or the summer hard court season. Just have the indoor season ahead of us between the end of the year. You can see it's uh, mid-September. Looking at the results of the last several uh, weeks of action, uh, Stefan Kozlov, not a great run. Um, four and five record in five tournaments, so did not play as well as he has recently. He got bounced in the first round at the U.S. Open and his ranking fell from 64th to 68th. Uh, but again, his goal for this year was just to get into the top 100, so still having a, a very successful season. Maxime Cressy, um, also, you know, not the best uh, stretch for him. His record was 5-6, and six, so also a losing record for him. And you can see we dropped from 41st to 49th in the world, so it's going to be... Uh, Difficult to get into the top 35, which is one of his key goals for this season. Uh, a lot of work to do over the uh, next couple months of the indoor season. Going to have to have a real breakthrough in a high-level event for Maxime to have any chance of getting into the top 35 in the world. Uh, he did win those two matches in the U.S. Open uh, with wins over J.J. Wolf and Roger Federer. So uh, that is certainly the uh, highlight of his season so far. Uh, but we still have not done enough to uh, move up in the rankings to the degree that Maxime had wanted to. As we head into the uh, final stage of the season, looking at our agreements with the players, you know, Maxime, the only goal he's achieved is, is reaching the quarterfinals of a 250 or 500 level event. 
Grand Slams are over, so he's not going to reach the round of 16 there. And uh, he's going to need to win a few matches in a Masters 1000 event if he gets into one to um, achieve that goal. And, uh, you know, we're 14 spots away from 35th in the world. It's going to be hard to achieve that over the uh, couple months that we have left this season. Stefan Kozlov, on the other hand, wanted to be in the top 100, wanted to win a match at a Grand Slam, wanted to get to the round of the six, round of 16 at a 500 or 250 level event, and wanted to get into the uh, top 16 in the U.S. Uh, he's achieved all those goals. The one goal he hasn't achieved is uh, just getting into a Masters 1000 level event. So uh, hopefully we will be able to do one of the uh, last couple Masters events over the, the course of the fall season and get him to 100% uh, completion of all of his goals. But he's 88% right now, so I think it's uh, pretty likely that Stefan, Stefan Kozlov will want to come back and work with the Old School Sports Tennis Academy next year. Uh, Maxime may be moving on after this season. Uh, he's probably not going to be pleased with how we've done unless we really improve things over the last two months of the season. Uh, we're not really thrilled with how the year has gone either. So uh, we've got two months left to see if we can turn things around. That is what we will focus on in our next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.